Superior soundstage, distinguished dialogue, bold bass, stunning surround sound. When it comes to premium soundbars, we really are on the lookout for the best of the best, but with so many different options available and the difference is getting harder to pick out. The real question is, is the Sennheiser Ambio Soundbar Plus the pick of the bunch? Let's find out. Hey guys, Louis from Smart Home Sounds here and I've got a big one for you today. Now, no, admittedly, it's not a brand new piece of tech, but it's one that you've all been asking for for a little while now. Now, if you're not aware, the Ambio Plus is the not so little brother to the acclaimed Sennheiser Ambio Max and it's got some big boots to fill quite literally. Now, just because this one is cheaper and smaller than the Ambio Max though, it doesn't mean it's small. It's still a big, powerful and expansive bit of kit, capable of delivering a maximum output of 400 watts. And considering it comes in at £1,299, I think it's fair to say that this one sits firmly in that hotly contested premium soundbar category. Now, naturally, the first question that I had was how does it compare with the Sonos Arc and, of course, a couple of other soundbars on the market right now. So make sure you stay tuned for those comparisons coming up. Now, if you're new to this channel and this video helps you in any way then we'd love it if you subscribe to let us know that you'd like us to keep making videos like these and if you're not new but you haven't hit that subscribe button yet then let me know down in the comments what you're waiting for because of course this channel is for you guys after all now if you are after a new soundbar and you want to support us then head over to smarthomesounds.co.uk okay First up, let's talk about design, because after all, this is gonna sit front and center in your space, so you are gonna want it to look great. Now, it's gonna fit in the majority of spaces and under most TVs on a media stand or wall mounted or something like that. Now, as a general rule of thumb, we'd probably recommend this size soundbar for TVs 55 inches and larger, just to avoid it looking disproportionate with a big soundbar underneath. The build itself, well, it's very Sennheiser. It's got that robust and bold look that a lot of people love about the Ambio Max, albeit to a less imposing extent. Now, only available in black, the cabinet is mainly made of smooth plastic, but it definitely doesn't feel cheap. You've then got this nice fabric cloth wrapping around the grille, which I'm a big fan of. And on top of the panel, you've got all of your touch controls too, and your Ambio mode, which I'll get into a little later on. Now, there's some nice little bits of Sennheiser detailing that brings the whole design together, as well as some cool LED details that I really like. Now there's also this neat little codec light that will flash up the audio codec that you're listening to, which is a nice bit of detail and actually ideal for helping figure out if you're listening to Dolby Atmos audio or not. Now I think in terms of design, the Ambo Plus has actually surprised me. I'm not normally one to like the more traditional black box style tech, but this one is sleek, stylish, and I can actually see myself having it in my living room. What about under the hood then? Well, we've got a total of nine speakers inside this one, which is pretty surprising considering its more compact form factor. In the front, you'll find three two inch aluminum full range drivers, another two on each side angled outwards for a wide audio dispersion, and then another two upwards facing on the top here. These are then supported by two up firing four inch subwoofers designed to improve the overall bass performance too. Each driver has a class D amplifier powering it, making that nine in total, while all the audio processing is handled by Sennheiser's single quad core processor. Now, we've never been a channel that dives into the nitty gritty of spec sheets as that never tells the full story, but I know that some of you guys do love seeing it all, so I'll get Ben to flash up the specs for you now. What about connectivity then? Well, right off the bat, on the back of the soundbar, you guys will see that there's a lot going on here. Now, you've got your optical port, Ethernet, HDMI 2.1 eARC port, two HDMI 2.0 inputs, USB and RCA inputs, as well as your power socket here too. Now there's lots of connectivity options to choose from then, and the fact that there's two HDMI inputs is a big plus, but it is a little frustrating that neither of these will be capable of supporting 4K 120 hertz gaming via pass-through. Now I know the struggle of just not having enough HDMI 2.1 ports on your TV, especially when you're already using one for eARC, so it's definitely something to think about, and I can see why it might be a down side of this soundbar if you are serious about your game and especially when there are soundbars out there like the Sony HD A7000 that doesn't have the same sort of issue. Other than that though Sennheiser's eARC connection gives us support for Dolby Atmos in its enhanced true HD format. Now you've also got compatibility for pretty much every other audio codec out there. Now you've also got Bluetooth 5.0 with this soundbar and Wi-Fi streaming via all the major music services with Apple AirPlay 2, Spotify and Tidal Connect and Google Chromecast built in. Now the range of 
connectivity options is one thing, but it was great to see how quickly audio transitioned between my device and the soundbar too. Now there is always a little bit of a delay between press and play and hearing it on your speaker over Wi-Fi, but genuinely, this was one of the quickest that I've seen, so top marks on that one. In terms of control, along with the touch controls on top of the soundbar itself and the pretty standard Ambio Soundbar Plus remote you get in the box, a lot of the real magic is going to come via the Sennheiser Smart Control app. Now as apps go, I've been really, really impressed with this one. It's responsive and intuitive, especially when it comes to setting your soundbar up from scratch. Now you've also got the benefits of some additional features like an integrated music player with input selection, volume, adjustable EQ presets, voice control with Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant, voice enhancement enhancement, night mode, as well as the signature Ambio toggle and system calibration too. Now, I know what you're all thinking, what is Ambio mode? Well, this is essentially Sennheiser's custom processing method that will boost the overall performance of the soundbar by enhancing the overall effects of spatial and immersive audio. It's a great feature that works alongside audio codecs like Dolby Atmos to really kick the immersion and soundstage up a notch in movies as well as music, and I've had loads of fun testing it out. Now, at the bottom, you'll also find Sennheiser's impressive room calibration system. Now, this is an automatic equalization software that uses the four built-in mics on your soundbar, so there's no need to have a long wire or use a microphone in your room. Now, you literally just click calibrate in the app and then you can chill out while the soundbar does the rest for you. Now, it's a feature that I'd 100% recommend using and recalibrating if you ever move your soundbar because I genuinely don't think that there's a quicker way to enhance performance. Now, you do have more detailed enhancements on the settings page of the app, like center channel adjustments, codec settings, LED brightness, and things like that, but there's not endless amounts. So a couple of minutes having a play around is more than enough to get acquainted with this one. So we know how it looks and how we use it, but how does it sound? Now, if you've watched us for a while now, you know that we like to carry out real world tests. So we've tried this soundbar out in a variety of setups with lots of different content. But before I give you my feedback, I'm gonna give you guys a quick sound test so you can hear it for yourself. Now, as always, the usual disclaimer that what you hear over YouTube won't be exactly what we're hearing right here in the studio, but it should give you a good flavor of what you can expect. Here we go again, huh? So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. For me though, this one really is a beast when it comes to movies, TV and music with a few standout qualities to really highlight. I think first and foremost, we've got to talk about the soundstage because as room filling goes, this one knows how to do it right. Now, no, it's not as powerful or as expansive as its bigger brother, the Ambio Max, but I genuinely don't think it needs to be. The level of performance that you're getting in return with this one is more than capable of filling a large open plan space and quite frankly, makes the Max look pretty expensive in comparison. Whether it was Atmos or non-Atmos content, the audio felt adequately spacious and impressively broad. The scene that really impressed me when testing was when James and Madeline are trapped inside the DB5, being shot at from close range in James Bond No Time To Die. Now, when we're in the car, the soundbar did a really good job of making it feel like the audio was further away and switches it up to give a very expansive performance when you're back outside of the car looking in. For me though, the standout feature of this soundbar compared with other soundbars that I've tested was the detail and how it placed audio effects around the room. Whether it was bullets flying overhead or a breeze whistling across a desolate landscape, it felt as if what was happening on screen was really happening in my living room. Now, as far as Dolby Atmos handling and surround sound effects go, the Ambio Plus does a great job for a standalone soundbar. The physical height channels reflect sound up off the ceiling and throw you right into the midst of the action. However, I don't think it was quite as encompassing as a full multi-speaker setup, which is to be expected, right? Now, Sennheiser don't actually offer surround sound rear speakers, which is disappointing and something to bear in mind if you're looking for that authentic 360 degree soundscape. They do, however, offer a subwoofer that you can add to this soundbar. Now, a real plus point for this soundbar over its competition is that you can also use a third party subwoofer with this soundbar. So that gives you extra flexibility there for adding extra bass, but you will miss out on some of the customization in the Sennheiser Smart Control app, which is definitely worth bearing in mind. 
From the soundbar alone, I thought the bass output was decent, and we tested it out in a variety of different spaces. And I think in those small to medium sized rooms and at higher volumes, you're gonna get more than enough crash and rumble to really enjoy those action packed blockbusters or bass heavy music at home. However, you might be left wanting a little bit more in a bigger open plan living area. Now, I know I did get a little bit of that when we tested it out in our larger showroom, especially. It still felt high octane, just with slightly less rumble in your chest, even when I cranked it right up. Now, a big thing that I I mentioned earlier was the ambio setting and I did notice some clear differences when this was both turned on and off. Now when it's on you definitely get a broader soundstage. The audio is wider and more encompassing and so much fun to listen to especially with music but I did think it struggled to replicate the same levels of precision as when it was turned off. It's like a little bit of a catch-22 really because although I did enjoy the more lively and expansive audio that came with the ambio mode I'm also a sucker for my more natural and detailed dialogue and the more nuanced scenes of film or TV shows and you do lose a little bit of that with this mode turned on. Now in an ideal world you would have the best of both but sadly that's just not the case. But in general I'm glad this setting is an option and one that I would recommend anyone to try out. Now once I figured out what ambio mode was like and decided to turn it off I've got to say that the separation and the layering really was great. Considering that's what I love most about this soundbar I felt like I got the best experience for me with that mode off. Now moving away from film and TV I do just want to focus on the music listening experience from this soundbar very quickly because I've really enjoyed testing it out with my favorite tracks. The experience was lively, dynamic, and surprisingly musical. Of course, you've got the endless streaming capabilities, which is a massive plus, but if you're a serious music listener, then I think you'll actually be pleasantly surprised by the depth and the details of this one. Now, we test a lot of hi-fi products on our channel, and we know for a fact that traditional wired listening is almost impossible to beat, but I genuinely think that this is as close as you're gonna get from a standalone soundbar. Now, no, it might not suit everyone and I'm not saying chuck your dedicated listening setup and buy this instead but if you are the type of person who loves high fidelity music listening and does want to dip your toes into the world of soundbars then this is definitely going to be the thing that tempts you. Now, if you're looking at this soundbar, then it's likely that you're gonna be looking at a few other options in this market, including the Sonos Arc, the Sony A7000, and maybe even the Step Up, the Ambio Max. Now, I'm not gonna get into a full in-depth comparison here, as I do think that that deserves a whole separate video, but I would like to give you my initial thoughts, as that might help you out at this stage. When it comes to the Sony A7000, I have to admit that I'm yet to go in depth with this one, but there are some key differences to highlight. Coming in at £1,299, it's a natural competitor for the Ambio Plus, and they both offer a great experience for movers in TV. I do think the A7000 has slightly better dialogue than the Ambio Plus, but dialogue is by no means weak on the Ambio either. The Ambio Plus offers a 7.1.4 home theatre system with its Ambio virtualization, whereas the A7000 is a 7.1.2 soundbar, and for me, I do think the Ambio offers a better experience with Atmos content. Now I would also say it's slightly better for music and does a better job with separation for a more detailed performance. Now a couple of pros for the Sony, if you've got a Sony TV which offers center sync then you can make the most of both your TV speakers and the soundbar working together if you go for the A7000. Now the Sony also offers an additional 2.1 port so you've got two with this one which could have a big impact in your decision making if that's something that you make use of. And finally, Sony do offer optional rears to add to their soundbars, and that will level up your experience using their 360 spatial sound mapping technology, which creates phantom speakers around your space for a more immersive setup for Atmos content. The SASW5 are normally the recommended pairing with this soundbar, which come in at £699 a pair. Now, like the Ambio Plus, you can also add a subwoofer to the A7000 as well, so you do have more options with this soundbar when it comes to upgrading. Personally, I think if you've got no intention of adding rears and the Ambio Ambio would probably be my pick out of the two, especially for Atmos content, but again, more testing needs to be done to share my full thoughts. Now, the Ambio Plus takes a lot from its award-winning bigger brother, the Ambio Max. Now, the Max has been a hugely popular soundbar, but coming in at £2,199, it is a big step up from the Plus. Now, as mentioned, it is also a bigger soundbar, which on the one hand means we're going to get a lot more bass and more impactful performance, but on the other hand, can be too much for certain spaces, and its larger size can encroach on the bottom of your screen depending on your TV setup. 
So the Plus has really taken the bits that we love from the Max and put it into a slightly more modern and more compact soundbar, which is easier to place in your space. Essentially, offering a compromise of Ambio performance with a more attainable size and price for a lot of consumers. Inside the Max, we've got 13 high-end drivers which work together to offer a 5.1.4 setup, giving us impressive 30 hertz bass without involving a separate subwoofer. Now there are five 25 mil tweeters, six 10 centimeter woofers, and two nine centimeter upwards firing full range drivers under the hood of the Max. Now the Max was Sennheiser's original Ambio soundbar, renamed when the Plus launched, and the new name really highlights that this soundbar would be for those looking for a maximum performance from a single soundbar. So if that sounds like you and you've got the extra budget, then the Ambio Max might be worth a closer look. Right then, on to the tough bit. How does this one stack up against the Sonos Arc? Well, both of these soundbars are great within their own right, but considering the Arc comes in at £899, I can understand why a lot of you guys would be tempted by the £400 saving that there is to be had with this one. Obviously, the big USP for the Sonos Arc is the ecosystem, and if you're already bought into Sonos, it's really hard to argue with, especially when it's so easy to add a sub or rears and group with other speakers around your home. But if you're not too bothered by building an ecosystem and are just just looking for the best standalone soundbar, plus you're looking for things like Bluetooth connectivity, or you already have a third party subwoofer you could hook up, then Sennheiser feels like a more attractive offer. For me, the Ambio Plus also edges it when it comes to pure music performance, and considering how well the Arc performs in this area, that's a good plus for the Ambio. You could argue that the Arc has a wider soundstage and feels open plan living areas better than the Ambio Plus, but I think as standalone soundbars, it is pretty close. The Dolby Atmos handling of both of these soundbars is up there with the very best, and I can say with confidence, whichever of these you go for, you're not gonna be disappointed. I think for me though, the biggest thing with this one is context. Now, as someone who owns Sonos at home already, I don't think the Ambio Plus is 400 pounds better for me. But if I wasn't in that boat and I was coming in fresh, I'd probably go as far as to say 1,299 pounds is worth it. It just all depends on where you sit on that spectrum, really. Now, as I mentioned, you can add rears to the Ambio Plus, but you can for the Arc. So for an additional £498, you can add a pair of the new Sonos Era 100 speakers to the Arc for a more immersive experience. And if you really want to level up, you could go for the Era 300 speakers, which have upwards firing drivers for more immersion, but of course, for an additional cost. What is interesting though, and makes this comparison even closer, is the pricing of adding a subwoofer to your soundbar. The Ambio Sub has an RRP of £699, whilst the Sonos Sub Gen 3, which is our recommended sub for the Arc for most spaces, comes in at £799. So not a huge difference, but it does make the difference in price a bit closer. So, lots of tech to wrap your head around and plenty of things to think about moving forward. But like I said right at the very start of this video, this is a premium Dolby Atmos soundbar, and I do think that it delivers on all of the promises that you'd expect from something in this price range. Now, that's not to say that there's not some really really tough competition out there and I don't think it's going to be the best solution for everyone and every space but if you're coming from a hi-fi background and you want a high fidelity listening experience from a standalone soundbar then this is a really solid option for your shortlist. Hopefully you enjoyed this one guys please let me know down in the comments what you think of this soundbar and I'll catch you all in the next one.